Very good. Good morning. Mike Ritzema here, i3 Business Solutions. We're going to talk about my top three functions in Microsoft Teams. And I'll just tell you right now, my favorite things that I like to use and use a lot, I doubled it and said, uh, let's look at six of them. And let's get straight into it and start with posting multiple channels and the formatting or the composing to add a subject. So I'm going to move over to Teams here. And then I'm going to mute my phone. And so now I am in Teams and I'm going to go to the uh, team, our general announcement team, company announcement team. And let's just say I want to get people involved and, and uh, make sure they're invited to the St. Patrick's Day event. So I'm going to post a new conversation, but I'm going to use this format down here. I'd say 90% of the posts that I do, I use the formatting. And in, in this case, it's St. Patrick's Day reminder to come on, folks, show up. Now, I like to use a lot of the uh, formatting, so I'm going to use the bullet, and it's tomorrow, and be there, et cetera. And now we want to post this, and uh, you know, again, I can use the bolding, I can use italics. So lots of formatting to do. I'm sure a lot of you are replying with GIFs and we can use emojis and so on and keep things moving like that. But here it is, post in multiple channels because not everybody goes to the company announcement. My goodness, I don't know about you. We send out broadcast emails, we post things and still people are saying, boy, I didn't even know about that. So in this case, I'm gonna post to multiple channels and I'm gonna select the channels here and my goodness, I'm going to swamp the whole company with this thing. I'm going to go to the leadership team. I'm going to go to the sales team, uh, the general sales team, as opposed to a channel. I'm going to go to the network team, and I'm going to hit the te technical account manager team, and I can just keep going and going. And I'll update that. And I'm now going to interrupt everybody at 11.03 a.m., with an announcement. In a perfect world, I could schedule this. Or in a better world, I would do this before 8 o'clock or during the noon hour or after 5 p.m. So I'm not interrupting everybody right in the middle of the day. But that's how you post to multiple channels. And certainly the formatting or the composing box allows you to use bolding and text sizing and uh, uh, text colors and so on, GIFs. Uh, emojis, etc. Post to multiple channels. Now, another one I, I'm sure you use, and uh, I certainly use it maybe too much, is uh, at mention. So I, I say at mention is for attention or for action items. And so in this case, uh, I want Grace to do something very specific. So I just at mention, and that'll that'll cause this to pop up and she'll actually see that, especially if I've got three, four, five people involved in communicating and I have, and maybe a number of them are just FYI, hey, this is happening. Uh, we can use the at mention to call out a specific person for specific action. And so that's the way I use at mention, hey, this is important. I want you to take specific action on this. And so that's the at mention function, which I'm sure you're using. It works in Outlook, it works in Teams, it works uh, across the internet, I think. I'm gonna move on to mark unread as a reminder. I don't know about you, but between my personal email, LinkedIn, I don't know, Facebook instant messenger, text messaging, business email, teams, people are coming at me from all directions with requests and things to do. And I have to keep track of this. And now I get a team's request to do something, but I'm busy doing something else. So in this case, what I can do is I can mark as unread. So Grace asked me to do something. I'm busy right now. I have to get to it later. I'm going to mark this conversation as unread. I can also do this right in the uh, in the message area, mark is unread. And another way that I can remind myself, and I personally don't use this much, maybe you do, 
is to pin this item. And this will pin this conversation to the top. And I could have a list of two or three or four of them that I have to get to. And then certainly I can unpin the conversation and I can mark the conversation as read. And, and when I come back to it and I reply and I, I uh, complete the task, then it, it goes to unread again. So mark it as unread is another one. I want to show you an interesting function that I have used to use in the past. It's back now. It worked with Skype, uh, but it now works in Outlook with Teams. And that is, if I come to my email here and Grace sent me an email, I can reply to the email. If I've got three, four, five people on this email, I go to the other actions, the ellipse over here, and I can reply with a meeting. So this will build a meeting uh, immediately and a point, calendar appointment, invite everybody involved. I could do that. But I can also move the conversation to Teams. So if I reply with instant message, I've now moved the conversation to Teams. Now, uh, I'm going to be more immediate and uh, just flatten this conversation, perhaps. So that means that if I reply to all, I could say, hey, let's talk about this. Now I've got three or four people. It's important enough that we need to have a conversation about this right now and deal with this customer situation, whatever it is. I can move it into Teams. I can say, let's talk. I can go straight to the video call and have a conversation right now. So in Outlook, I can reply to all with an instant message and just start a conversation right now, flatten the situation and move on. So that's the integration, the power of Microsoft Office and Teams. I'll tell you, I want to show you something that uh, maybe I'm a little bit uh, over the top on, and that is when we're sharing documents, <clears throat> in a perfect world, we're not attaching documents to emails or, uh, or in a Teams or sharing a link to the document. So if we come to the standardized documents here and I say that I wanna share this letterhead, I right click on the letter, the letterhead for i3 business solutions and I'm gonna share it. And if you're not syncing to your desktop, we can show you how to do that. Uh, but this is the way that I do, I share, share a link like this is I'm gonna allow editing and it's for anybody in the whole company. I apply that and now I wanna share this to Grace. And certainly I can email it to her. I'm sure you're doing this today is you're, you're uh, emailing it. In this case, I'm gonna copy a link because it is in a centralized SharePoint library, and I'm going to copy this link, and I'm going to come back to Teams. And I'm going to share this to Grace, paste it. So now what I've done is, you know, here's the document. What I've done is shared the link, the centralized link to Grace rather than sending the actual document. And that's a governance issue. As we move forward with Teams and Microsoft 365, how do we communicate? How do we move forward? Uh, and from a governance standpoint, let's not be sharing copies of documents. Let's share centralized links to commonly used documents. So I wanted to show you a bonus item, two bonus items I'm gonna give you here, and one is the slash com command. So if you come up to your search bar here, uh, certainly we can search for anything, but the slash command, the forward slash, gives you a lot of actions. And the one that I use a lot is, because we have Teams Voice at i3 Business Solutions, you can dial a phone number, and I can just put the phone number in here and bang, hit enter, and dial that phone number without going to the call section and creating a call. Lots of options in Slash. One of them that's kind of interesting, you want to know what's new in the last month or two in Microsoft Teams, here it is. You know, a few days ago, this is new. Uh, uh, these are the changing changes that have shown up in Microsoft Teams. So the Slash command gives you a, a lot of options. Do not disturb. 
Uh, I'm away, I'm available, changing your status, bang, 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 shortcuts, shortcuts for you there. And the last thing I wanna show you is uh, renaming a group chat. I think it's an irony that in Office 365, and I believe that in a roadmap, they should combine teams and chat. I don't know about you, um, but we I find that we're communicating a lot in groups in uh, chat rather than in the team. And in fact, you saw that when I went to the slash command is we have a leadership team here of about eight people. Well, we also have a team for that. Why are we communicating in chat? Because most of us live in chat and that's where it happens. So if I come to the top of a chat and here is uh, a chat between Kathy and Nate, and I can come to this edit button, name the group chat, and I can rename the chat. Uh, and I can put a customer name on it, a vendor name on it, a situation name on it, et cetera. So I can rename a chat uh, because we're gonna be coming back to this over and over again for months and months and months. So that is the uh, slash and renaming a group chat. So we went through multiple channels, formatting, app mention, how to share links rather than documents themselves, how to mark on red as an action reminder, how to reply from Outlook in Teams if you wanna move a conversation over quickly, the slash command and group chat. That's it. Mike Ritzema here, I3 Business Solutions. Have questions, need help with Teams, pulling Teams together with OneNote together with shared document libraries to improve your productivity. Track us down. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.